my name is Atratsu, and happy Halloween! I've already eaten way more candy corn than the average human being probably should have within their lifetime. Plastic! Ha <laughs> ha! It's kinda scary. Do you know what also is scary? Hentai backpacks. That's, that's my segue statement right there. Today we are reviewing The Darkness 2. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I should have said it the way it would prefer to be pronounced. The Darkness 2. This game is pretty darn graphic. While I don't pretend my audience is a bunch of little kids, I do know some of my audience gets more squeamish about gore than others, and not to mention the very strong language. So I'm making this disclaimer. Definitely not as an age barrier because, let's face it, even if you're too young to play this video game, you're going to ignore it anyway. That's what I would do. The Darkness 2 story starts out with a skippable opening cinematic. I'd love to just let Johnny talk for me because his voice acting is way better, but I don't think that that would be cleared under creative liberties, so I'm just going to imitate him with my own abbreviated introduction. Okay, you know how this story goes. In the beginning there was darkness, and that's exactly the way the darkness liked it. I thought the intro was going to get biblical, and in a way it kind of does. Get used to it, there's some pretty edgy themes going on in this game title, but why am I starting off with this disclaimer, right? Okay, by this time I think you're going to be tired of hearing my imitation, so I'm going to talk normal again. The Darkness 2 is a sequel to The Darkness 1, which, unfortunately, I've never played, because I don't own the appropriate console, and it was a console exclusive. The Darkness 2 is based on a webcomic series created by Mark Silvestri, Gareth Ennis, and David Wool. Why do I always read complicated names in my reviews? I've actually just started reading the comic series. I thought I could get through them all before I started really cracking down on writing my review, but there are over a hundred comics in the series, and I don't think I'm going to be able to finish reading them before it's recording and editing time. I've learned a lot of things from the comics which definitely aren't covered in the video game, or at least not in as much detail, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The Darkness 2 was developed by Digital Extremes, released February 6, 2012, and my copy, the copy I'll be reviewing, is for the PC, although it is available on consoles. Today we'll be covering two subtopics when it comes to the topic of story. First, we have story mode or single player if you prefer. This is the main attraction of the game and what we'll cover in the most detail. However, there is vendetta or multiplayer, which you can also do completely by yourself which is what I did because I'm the kind of guy that tries to do raids and dungeons designed for groups of people all by myself. Or you can do it with several friends, up to four people I believe. You play as the protagonist Jackie Estacado, orphan at birth, adopted into the Franchetti family and worked as a top hitman until ultimately becoming the Don himself. Th there's a story there but I'm not going to spoil it. Jackie Estacado wields the power of the darkness. The darkness is one of the three mighty powers. The other two being the Angelus and Magdalena. If I read those correct, I'm going to be really impressed. But don't worry your pretty little faces over the Magdalena. I don't think they ever really talk about the Magdalena unless it's in an extra conversation you might have with Johnny. However, you will hear a fair amount of information on the Angelus. The Angelus is basically the opposite of the darkness, or so they say. The problem is, after reading a handful of the comic series, I've concluded that they're both insane. And not the good kind of insane, the bad kind of insane. This isn't an angels versus demon, this is a dark demon versus light demon kind of fight. And if that doesn't make sense, go ahead and read the comics, it'll make a whole lot more sense after you get through them. Jack Estacado has learned to suppress the darkness in the first game, thanks much in part to the help of Johnny. Later, Johnny made a run for it because he felt the darkness starting to influence him. But Jackie has continued to live on until he ultimately gets ambushed by a group of armed men and lets the darkness back out because it was the only way to save himself. The darkness is a malevolent power which longs for nothing more than chaos and destruction. The darkness gives Jackie a number of unique abilities. 
Namely, as the comic series highlights, the power to create. Naturally, the game can't really give you that type of control, but it's still represented in the form of Darklings, which are small minions who assist Jackie in his missions. In the comics, by the way, they're hilarious, generally making pop cultural references and just general childish comments. Hello, monkey! It's been too long! Give us a hug! I'll pass, but thanks for the help. Jackie is also given the power to create these big backpack hentai tentacles, but there's no rule 34 here in this video game, ladies and gentlemen. No. These tentacles are used exclusively for creating graphic full gore scenes, which I was not even remotely prepared for when I first started playing. But more on that later, though. The plot is basically a creepy old guy is after the darkness's power, Jackie has no idea who's after him, he gets some help from Johnny, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much setting the stage for the entire game. After reading the comics, my perspective on the game has shifted slightly. There are a few interesting tidbits which were lost on me at first, but I now get. For example, you'll find the Darkness comic books, which is a nice touch, because those are the actual comic book covers. There were also a couple sub points that I didn't understand at the time when I went through the story, and after reading the comics they make more sense, but I really couldn't figure out how to articulate it in a way that would not be spoiling important information later on in the plot. So just trust me, I did learn a couple things that transferred very well between the video game and the comic series. However. As I'll go on to explain in a little bit, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should expect them to be similar. They're very different storylines. There are a few continuity errors and differences between the video game and the comics, but that really shouldn't be a surprise. The video game is based on the comics, not following it exactly. What do you mean? You heard the expression, mess with the bull and you get the As always, let's get into the mechanics of the game. First off, for the story mode, single player game. Hello, have you met our lord and savior Wasid? But seriously, normal first person shooter controls, mouse for head movement, fingers firmly placed on Wasid for the rest of the game, aim down the crosshairs, and be sure to land those headshots. That should also translate into simple and easy controller support as well, but once again, I don't have a controller yet. I'm getting pressured into buying one for Rocket League, so that might actually change in the not too distant future. We shall see. So the unusual aspect of this game, mechanically speaking, is the addition of using your tentacles in addition to your regular first person shooter movements. Your tentacles can grab people, eat hearts to restore health, throw objects, break down doors, and smash into people if you're close enough. The downside? They cannot be used in the light. If you're standing on their light bulb, the only idea you'll be thinking is, I can't see! The Darkness 2 quickly becomes a light bulb power source, whereas Waldo's search wherever you feel a beam of light. I should also point out that other darkness powers that you use, if you're like holding something or if you're casting one of the more advanced darkness skills, those will also disappear if you get a flashlight shining on you. So yeah, keep that in mind. As you gain darkness points, or whatever they're called, you slowly purchase and unlock upgrades in three main areas. Tentacles, guns, and personal upgrades like health. There's no clear difference between these ability categories, or at least not for me. Just browse through and choose the ones that fit your play style. Each upgrade is useful for the game. Pro tip though, go for eating hearts for health regeneration. That option is the one that I chose first, everything else is kind of meh. I can use it, but it really doesn't add, a, add much else to the game. The story itself isn't very long. A normal person can probably beat it in 5 to 6 hours, depending on your playstyle. If you do vendettas or go for achievements or the difficulty is higher, the time required to beat the game will also increase, as you should expect it to. But all in all, it's actually a pretty short game. Speaking of vendettas, moving on! Vendettas has its own story taking place parallel to the main story. I uh, kind of recommend that you do the main story first before you do Vendettas for that reason. You choose one of four characters who will do side missions to help bring the story all together a bit more. They all have ties to the darkness. The characters are Inugami, the samurai guy, Shoshana, 
the one without a stereotype, unless she was trying to be the strong lead female role. In that case, she missed the main game. Jimmy Wilson, aka the Scottish Axe Weirder. And lastly, but not least, J.P. Dummond, the Witch Doctor. I turned in love with you, bum, 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 bum. I told the Witch Doctor. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, ting. Uh, whoops, sorry, I got carried away there for a second. There's not much else to say about this game mode. You can join up with four other friends or be antisocial like me and play all by your lonesome. It's completely doable either way, I went through the entire thing by myself. Um, now excuse me as I dry my tears on Kusanagi's hilt. <laughs> but while it was beautiful, the game ends on a cliffhanger, which both upsets you and excites you. Or, I guess I'm not excited than you, but it uh, excited and upset me. Actually, wait, there is a choice at the end, but it's a simple matter of replaying the last level with your level select, so it's hardly worth note. After you beat the game, you get a new game plus, so you can just play that last level again to see the other um, story arc, if you want to call it that. Anyway, after you're done with that cliffhanger, that's it. Unfortunately, it's been four years since The Darkness 2 was first released, and the likelihood of seeing a sequel is minimal. Maybe someday someone will pick up the mantle and grant us a Darkness 3, then we'll be able to get off this terrible cliffhanger, but that's why I started reading the comics. It was my hope that I would be able to get a continuation of the Darkness 2 by reading the comics. Yeah, yeah, unrealistic expectations, but even so many years later, I'm still burning to know what happens next. I'm one of those guys that just can't let things go, just saying. So I checked out the comics, and I've got some good news and bad news. The good news is you'll definitely be able to sate your rabid desire for the Darkness's story. The bad news is the comics story follows a different path. I should probably stop here and point out that I could very well be wrong. I haven't finished the series yet, but the first few comics are different than the first Darkness video game. So it stands to reason that the second game is building off the Darkness first video game. But my point is, not all is lost. But the likelihood of another video game, I don't know. Don't hold your breath. One final point. I've mentioned the comics in this review more than I probably should, but that's because I thought I might be able to write an even better review with the information from the comics. In the end, I don't think that really helped in my presentation at all. But I will make a few quick points about the comics while wrapping this review up. As I've already clearly stated, my motivation for reading the comics was to get closure for the ending of The Darkness 2. But I ended up learning a few interesting things about The Darkness, Angelus, and Jack Yesticato, and Jenny, and their roller coaster of emotions. One panel I'll be laughing at the Darklings or a snide comment from Jack Yesticato. The next I'll be really angry or really sad. The relationship with Jackie and Jenny is far less charming than it's presented in The Darkness 2. Which is kind of upsetting. I'm yelling and I'm yelling inside of my brain. What's wrong with you, Jackie? Don't do that. Say this. Don't do this. They're definitely worth checking out if you liked playing these games, but they should definitely be considered as a whole separate entity from the games. Think like Star Wars, Star Wars Expanded Universe, or Legends kind of thing. Don't make the same mistake I did, and hope you'll gain newfound clarity for the series or for the cliffhanger, for that matter. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Are you surprised I was able to keep that reference until the end of my review? I'm so proud of myself. I'm gonna just pat myself on the back. Honestly, the most memorable detail about this game for me was the story. The gameplay was pretty natural, but I can see why some people might find it forgettable and a blur. There isn't much new ground being traversed here. I guess I'm just a sucker for the bad guy trying to stumble his way to be a good guy kind of storytelling. But even while I'm saying that, that's not really what The Darkness 2 is. The Darkness 2 is a story of a very troubled man and a terrible power he inherited on his 21st birthday. 
how he seeks to control and not be consumed by it, struggles to find a purpose in a world full of death, killing, murder, and no light in sight. You know of its history. Well, that was a really sad note to end the review on. Well, I guess some of my favorite stories have bittersweet endings. Also, I forgot to record the outro for this, so you're going to have to deal with birds in the background. Sorry. Anyway, thank you for watching my review. And as always, my name is Atratsu, and I approve this review. I also have two really loud birds. Thank you. Looking forward to the next review. See you next time. The darkness, too. The darkness. The darkness, too. Mm, the darkness.